The following presentation is a gift from the team at Streamline Publishing, publishers of Fine Art Connoisseur, Plain Air Magazine, and weekly newsletters Fine Art Today, Realism Today, Plain Air Today, and American Watercolor, and events, the Plain Air Convention and the Figurative Art Convention. We offer over 400 different art instruction tutorials in ultra high quality video by the world's leading artists. If you like what you see, help us support our artists and our team with your purchase. Each video aired has a special discount code for today only in the comments section with a link to the video offered. And to see everything we do, or if you want to receive notice of new releases, new products, and new events for artists, simply click the other link, which says, see everything we do. Thank you. Hi, I'm Eric Rhodes with Plein Air and Fine Art Connoisseur Magazines. I hope you're enjoying this time of learning and growing and discovering new ways to think about art. Now, one of the things I love to do is to play, to experiment, to try new materials, to paint things that I normally don't paint. It actually makes me better as an artist overall, no matter what style I'm doing. This video is going to help you get there. It's called Fun with Acrylics with Karen Knudsen. Hi, I'm Karen Knudsen. I am an artist from Minnesota. Ashley was raised in Montana. And um, so hope you probably will hear a little bit of my Minnesotan accent as we do this video. Uh, I am so excited to show you some techniques of acrylic that will lead to you painting like Gustav Klimt. Gustav Klimt used little teeny, teeny shapes. And um, I used to think that that was a bad thing, but when you group those little shapes together like he did, uh, it becomes a good thing. I will show you uh, different things that you can do with this uh, technique. Like for instance, this is a painting that I did um, that is a close-up and it's a little funky, funky woman. And her hair is done in the Gustav Klimt and then part of her outfit. And uh, we will also be learning how to do uh, clothespin people. And that's what I call these, where you remember the old fashioned clothespins that were like, they were wooden? That's why I call them clothespin people. And so it's, it's, um, it's going to be a fun adventure. I can't wait to show you these great tricks. So let's get started. So before we get started, uh, I will tell you about the supplies that you will need to have on hand for this exciting painting technique. The very first thing that you will need is Strathmore Aquarius 80 pound paper. It's very, very light. Uh, it, it, it is so light when you first get it that people think, think that it's, it's not going to be good. But we'll be coating it with a matte medium and it gets stiffer as it goes and it's it's just wonderful paper. It really does make a difference in this, in this painting. You will also need rubbing alcohol. It's important to have the 91% um, on, on your rubbing alcohol. The 70 or whatever it is doesn't work as well. So it's important that you get the 91%. You'll need Kleenex to have on hand. You will also need paper towels, a roll of paper towels. Uh, you will need scissors, a spray bottle. I like the push button, push button top on your spray bottle. Uh, your brushes, I use a one inch uh, flat. I actually use uh, watercolor brushes instead of, I don't care for acrylic brushes as well. So what I do is I just label them with red tape and that tells me that these are my acrylic brushes. Um, so I've got a one inch flat, I have one half inch flat, I have a number six round, and then these are special tools that um, come in handy for making marks on your paper. They are called shapers, and uh, they are actually, this is rubber, 
uh, on the end of it. And so if you don't want to buy this, you can actually use an eraser, you know, either the kind little square one or the end of your, of your pencil. And that will work out really well too, because it's kind of like it's a rubber, like an eraser. And these come in lots of different sizes. This is the one that I like. It's a half inch, uh, half inch chisel edge. You also might need um, a palette knife uh, for getting out some of the paints that are a little bit harder to get out of the tube. Uh, you will be using uh, two paints, which is the heavy golden paints. The main two that I use in my demo are um, light blue violet uh, Liquitex, or if you want to use golden, the same, um, it's the same color, light ultramarine blue is, is another one that is wonderful, wonderful color. I also start lots of times with Hansa Yellow Medium. So really those are the two heavy ones that you'll be using. Oh, and then black, carbon black, and titanium white. So those are the four. Then as far as your liquid acrylics, uh, that is up to you on which ones that you like. Uh, again, I prefer golden. But the cheaper ones that, um, that you can get for a dollar a bottle at Michael's or some of the craft stores um, are really, they work well for this too. Sometimes they don't come out of the bottle as well and so there are, you know, there's benefits to getting the better paint that way. So I'm just going to say just get a wide variety of those, you know, your favorite colors. If you get a yellow, a blue, a red, and maybe a couple of other um, secondary colors, you, you'll be good. So let's see, a uh, otherwise Tombow um, markers, uh, you will be using um, a, a permanent marker, Sharpie is what I like, the twin tip, so I can get two, di two different sides. If I need things to get whiter, I use a uniball pen. Um, I also, when I, when I make my circles, I will use a compass, and so that that's and you can get that or not. I, that's up to you. Um, I think that's really oh double stick tape. You need ATG tape. Um, it's a double stick tape, and this is this is what that looks like. And then gold foil paper for um, finishing up the last tips. And you can get this at any hobby store or um, uh, joggles.com is another one that you can get it from. So that's a list of all of our supplies. So let's get started. So now that we have learned about the materials of how to do the painting like Gustav Klimt, let's do the most important step, which is preparing the paper. So I'm going to take acrylic matte medium and remember, you are using Strathmore Aquarius 2 80 pound paper. And I am putting an ample amount, just squirting it right out of the tube. And this is acrylic matte medium. And then I just lightly spray with a water bottle, just a few sprays, just to get it to move a little bit. And then I want to spread this out using an icky brush. Um, I want, I guess I'll call it just painting a barn brush. Uh, I want to see all of these grooves because what's fun for me when I scrub out the, the lights is that the paint goes down into some of these grooves. And that's why I really like to do it that way instead of doing with white paint like some artists do with their whites. So. Now we are, are needing a little bit more Get on the edges here. <laughs> it's not coming out, so I'll just pour it this way. What the heck? And we'll spread that to the edges. Make sure that you go clear to the edge, right to the edge of the paper, because if you don't, 
Um, and we go to, to scrub out to get back to the whites later on, those whites, it, it, won't, it won't scrub out. So whatever you're trying to scrub, if you're trying to scrub out a, a, a brown color back to a white, it'll stay brown. So it's really important to get it all the way to the edge. And I, you notice that when I'm painting this, I'm going right, I have a tablecloth on here, plastic tablecloth, and I am painting right onto the plastic tablecloth too because I really want to get the whole paper done. And I don't want it to be perfect like I'm mowing a lawn. I want different directions with my brush. And if you uh, have it where the, where the paint is sticking up way too much, it's going to take like a day and a half to dry, number one. So you really don't need that much, but you do have to have it completely covered. So you keep checking the light and see how, how, if it's covered. And then we take, um, we take the corners and we do a monoprint here. And the monoprint, you see, does a suction type of a look. So, and that's just another special effect. And I even like it when you see like a square edge because it's just uh, a texture. And once you get that done, then you, um, you can, if you want to, you can use a brush and just do a few more suction marks, but I like to have a combination of the two. Then you take this shaper, and the shaper is, is actually injuring the paper. And I love to have uh, problems that I have to solve later, so, which means that when I will uh, try to take out that color, it won't come out of the areas where I'm putting this shaper. So I'm just, but so I will not put it clear across them because I may have a head right here and I don't want to have a slash across it. But near the edges, you shouldn't have anything important there. And so that's why I kind of do just a little bit of these shapers right on the edge. And now we'll let this dry and it'll probably take, you know, an hour or so before, before it's dry. So. It's really important to get this completely covered and dry before you move to the next step. So now that we have our paper all prepared and dried, we are, I have divided mine into four, four pieces. So this is a quarter sheet size right now, a quarter of the one that I just prepared. And um, the first thing that we, well, let me show you some, what we're going towards before we start. Here's some examples of some of the others that I have done. This one um, starts out, we are gonna, you want, I want you to pick three colors. In this one, it was the blue, the green, and the light blue as our analogous colors. So three analogous colors. And then you pick an opposite, which is the hot pink. And then we have a color that I call the naughty color, which you don't use very much of. And so that's the black, the black or the raw umber. And so you can see here's some other examples of this where, where again, I had um, warmer colors and then the opposite blue. And here is the greens and the purples and the opposite yellow. So you have, so you can see that there are some really possibilities of some really, really pretty colors. Um, Here's maybe one example to show you that w didn't turn out as well because the green was too light and so it really didn't show. To me, it's not as pretty as some of those with that spunky extra color. And this is before I realized that having that, that what I call a naughty color, the dark color, it really does make a difference in having a little bit more spunk in your, in your paper. So, with that done, we will start 
So we will start with the heavy body paint. I discovered that if I do that, that paint doesn't move. And so it makes, instead of just having all stripes, I've got something that's a little bit different. I do like to um, pay homage to my good friend Connie. So I usually will start with a heart and, and just make sure that this color is certain, you know, different places on the painting. So, um, and I barely, barely squirted it out. Uh, I think you could hear me scraping it. And by, by doing that, um, I'm able to get a real skinny layer of it and it's gonna dry really quickly. Now I'm squirting the first paint that we will be using and this is a green gold. And then we will use um, Bahama Blue. It's a really cool paint. This one is a cheaper paint, and so you'll notice when you have the cheaper paints that they don't drop out of the bottle quite as easily. So this one, um, you know, it, you can tell that it's coming out in squirts instead of just drops. So you just deal with it. That's that's it makes neat neat effect that way too. So I still have my teal color, which is a little different than the Bahama blue. And this is the golden, and you'll see that it drops out really, really well. And what I want is, I, I want by the end for them to be about a half an inch apart. So just keep going with this teal one. By the way, I learned this process from Mary Todd Beam's book. And um, it is just a fabulous, a fabulous book that um, Mary Todd Beam is a fabulous lady, actually. And I, I, she had this where you're scraping with a credit card. I have added another step to it that makes it more Gustav Klimt. Now what I'm doing right now is the naughty color. The naughty color, I actually count to 10 and try not to use more than that. So I got one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, come on, nine, ten. And now I want an opposite color to my triap, to my analogous color. So you can use, there's a metallic color here that's a copper color. So we'll see if we can get that one. And you see right away that that adds life to your, to your painting. Before I've even done any of the squirting at all, uh, you can tell that that little opposite is really cool. So if you have areas like this where it comes out too much, you take your palette knife and you scrape it off because we don't want that to take over the whole painting. So any of those we scrape off. And by the way, any time you have um, too thick of paint, you can just you can put it on with a palette knife. It doesn't have to be drops. So now we are going to do the scraping process. And what we need to do is create a bib for this. And so we'll take a motel key, or my husband always says, use the credit cards. They're good for that. So we'll start out with, with this and scrape towards and notice the beautiful colors that you get. And when you get to the paper towel, just make it go flat so that you get it off of the credit card. So again, we scrape and flat. And so we just keep scraping. In the areas where it's, where it's white on the edges, I don't wipe off the, the credit card at that point, and I bring the extra over on the side. It doesn't matter. You'll notice it being a little more cloudy because it's not wiped off. And um, so that's a key point to making sure. So we're going to take these. Now at home, I save these, and I'll show you why. <laughs> I tend to save everything. A little bit of a hoarder here. And so I'm going to put the bib back here. And I'm going to bless this. By adding water. Bless you, bless you, bless you. 
and then we'll tip it to the other side. What the water is going to do, and I can talk freely now because it's important to get that water on there right away. But after, after I, I get the water on, um, I wait five minutes so for it to create white spots. So now I get to do the other side. And that's exactly why I do it a half at a time. Because you have to get that water on there right away. And one more here. And we'll bless it. So I like to do it this way with my hand instead of with a squirt bottle because I know I'm going to get bigger spots when I do that. And if I were to tip this up, I would have like little wormy shapes. So there's, um, there's a lot to think about what reaction you want. But while this is drying, so we wait five minutes for this to work. And like I said, at home, I would have a chair or something for these to be able, and I would let them um, dry on there. Because what I have found out that they make really wonderful journals. So this, believe it or not, is a, a paper towel. And so this was just the, what I wiped off on the edge. You can see the scrape marks on it. And um, so it, it's... You just let it dry. You put on um, a gloss medium on both sides. And then you can put the inside with a color, an alternate color if you want to. Um, and then just doodle on it afterwards. And they turn out to be really, really cute. And I went to uh, one of the office supply stores and had them do this, this uh, coil for me. So here's another one that could have been really, it looked really ugly actually, uh, but when you added the little bit of the blue into it, it was really, really uh, fun. They make nice little gifts. So um, that's what I do with my extras. So now I'm going to turn this back to the original side, and we have to wait a couple more minutes before, um, before we take it off. So we'll take a little break. So it's been five minutes, and the way that I test it, if I don't think to set a timer, is I just feel the places that doesn't have the water on it. And if it gets on my fingers, then I know that it's not quite ready. But, but this, is, this is ready to go, and I've turned it around, so I'm on the first edge. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a paper towel on the first half, and you can see by the paper towel here that that's picking up where the, where the white is. But you also, you, you can see that they're not completely white. So now you spray it with a water bottle and then you do it again. And the second time is the charm. The second time they, the whites become completely white. And this is my little trick to create really neat effects that, that are Gustav Klimt-like. So you can imagine all the fun things you can do with that. So we'll turn around to the other side. And lift that off. And then spray it. So I would advise you to write these steps down and uh, because my students in the classes, they forget they'll spray first before they even before they even put the paint on or whatever. But just just uh, to remember that the reason you spray it to do the second time is so that those those white areas become completely white. If I were to spray that when I first did it, the paint is wet, you know. And right now, all of these are dry. So um, now I've got a beautiful um, underpainting that can be used for my next steps. Now that we got the underpainting done, and I bet you're all wanting to just do more of them, right? When I teach this, my students are like, can we just do this all day long? 
So, <laughs> but now we're going to do our value study. And um, I, this is one of the most important things that I learned from my mentor, John Salmonen. And so what you do is to draw a rectangle first of whatever size paper that you are working on. I'm working on a quarter sheet, a vertical. And so my rules are I'm going to start at this side of the paper and I'm going to direct your eye up to the top. And um, so I'm going to just do a, a circle so I can kind of just real lightly here so I can hitch up to that. But all right, so I'm going to come here with my, with my line and my object is to get up to the top of the paper. So I will come on the edge of that circle, which will frame my people. And then I come up to the top of the page. Now I go from the top of the page, reconnect to that circle, and then come over to the right side of the paper. Now I start at the right side of the paper and my object is, and I can have some fun in this part right now, just trailing along, but my object is to get down to the bottom of the page. So now I'm here to the bottom. Now I will start at the bottom and my object is to get back up to the top, to the left side of the paper. And if I color in my corners, and I want you to notice that um, students usually balk at this. They don't, most artists don't like to do a value study, but I want you to, to notice how quick this is. And it's not any framed piece of work, it's just a map for you to be able to follow when you do your painting. And it will, it's the nuts and bolts of, of, your, of your piece. So by coloring the, in the corners now, uh, because I had that rule of going from the left to the top, the top to the right, all of that, you have created a light pathway without even knowing it. And now I have got a light pathway to direct your way, th your way through the painting. Now we will add um, our clothespin people. And so in order to draw clothespin people, most people make the heads too big. So all you do is you just make a tiny head and it's almost, um, a little, it's not as round, it's more like a rectangle. And then the shoulders are slanted, a little bit like that. See if he's been working out or not. How broad are his shoulders? And then we come back. Don't pay attention to whether you're in the dark or the light. Just bring it down. I, because I'm tall, I think I make my figures tall. So mine are all uh, exaggerated as far as how long they are, but that's um, how I do the man. And then the woman, I'll just have her just slightly shorter and maybe leaning into the guy. Oh, let's put her over a little bit further. Okay, back and, and with the woman, I ha usually have just a long gown on is what I do. So I've got my, um, I've got my man and my woman here. Now I get to make changes on this. So you grab an eraser and be, because you've got your cruciform done now and, um, and, and you, the viewer can get through the painting very well with the lights. Now I want to say, okay, I want the dark to be on both sides of the man and the woman. So that is happening here and here. But so down here, I can say, I'm going to add just for interest, a little bit, another, another pathway of light down to here. And I look at these edges and say, are they all different? You know, do I have different square footage? If I'm flying over a field, um, will they be different square footage? And so that is, um, that really works. So now I've got over here, maybe the woman could be a little bit of a dark. And this is when I get to put an island of dark in. 
So first, when you start, you have the rule that you don't lift your pencil and you don't cross any lines. So everything goes smoothly when you're doing this whole thing. Now I'm just putting a little bit of an edge on here so that I can really showcase her, but I'm not cutting off that light pathway that will all be connected. So we'll connect that down to this and I've got, I've got my pathway still. And then the last thing you do is to color in their heads so that you, and I usually just vignette it down. Let's see if I can get rid of that. And we're ready to go. So here's another one that I did earlier that, that has kind of an indication of some of the things that we will be doing. And then I added in some cute little loops that actually repeated this loop. So I have three rules when um, I think about good design, and that's repetition, variation, and dominance. And so if I have a circle like this, I want to repeat it in a different way. So it's repetition and variation, and the variation would be that they're smaller. And um, on my finished product, I'll just tell you what's ahead, I put one like this that comes across the figures and then I added um, a way to connect it over to the side here. So it really works easily to do this process where you just don't lift your pencil and get the viewer to four sides of the paper um, and then you erase out a little bit more lines if you want to to make it more interesting and put in maybe a couple of what I call islands um, that you have to if you put an island in, you have lifted your pencil to put it in. So you can do that after you've established the main um, pathway. So now we're ready to go. The acrylics uh, that I uh, teach in this video are fantastic for painting like Gustav Klimt because they uh, produce little tiny shapes. As far as other subjects that I have used for this, I have done animals in this technique. I've done landscapes that are bright and not usual colors for landscapes. And I really, really love, um, I just love the colors that you get. And it gives you ideas for exploration of turning them a little bit abstract. I've also done abstracts with this technique. The thing I love most about acrylic is are the bright colors, of course, but also that you can layer and be a bit of an archaeologist, maybe, and um, just to, uh, to be able to layer, layer, layer all of uh, uh, different colors and get some really neat um, antiqued look. So um, I guess that's what drew me to acrylic in the first place. The thing that this video offers that is unique is how to paint figurative style without being intimidated. You really don't need to know how to draw people, per se. We can tell that these are people just by the simple little tips that I give you. So the main five, five things that I think a student will take away from this um, video is how to uh, make little, little tiny shapes in an easy fashion. One thing that I am known for lately is my wire drawing. In this video, it shows the first couple of steps on how to do wire drawings, how to recover from making mistakes by adding another layer, um, how to draw figurative work, um, I invented a couple of things in this, this that have never been shown. I do like to explain things in a very easy way, so I think you'll understand exactly how to do this painting. Well, that was Karen Knudsen and Fun with Acrylics, and you can learn more about it at lilyartvideo.com. So now that we've got our value study done, 
I will trace that, on, I'll put it on a tracing paper. For me, that works better. You may be a really good drawer and decide to go right on the paper, but I like to put it on the tracing paper and then move the tracing paper according to what is under that, on that underpainting. So I have drawn this on my tracing paper so that you can, you can see that. And then here's my underpainting and I will place that, um, just move it around until I like where the figures are according to that um, underpainting and get some really exciting things happening in their outfits. Because this is all going to be wiped out, so that part does not matter. So I'll just tape this right here. We want to tape it in two places. And by doing that, when you're putting your, I use carbon paper, not graphite paper, carbon paper. You get that at an office supply store. And I use it on purpose just because it's, it's dark. It's really, really dark and it shows really well. So I will put the carbon paper underneath here. And we just start tracing and make sure that you have the carbon paper the right way. And that, that's why the tape really helps. You can actually check it and see, and see how you're doing. Um, it's funny, I was given a demo for a big group and I, and I was telling them that. And then all of a sudden I checked and I was absolutely doing it just what I had told them not to do. And, and I did it the wrong way. So, at least I had just started just a little bit, so uh, I want you to remember to do that too. And you got these on and then get and deposit that onto your paper. Once that is done, and I went ahead and did this before so that you wouldn't have to watch me do all of that, I have got my um, drawing on the paper here now. So now we will be adding, we'll be rubbing out our whites and you have a choice to make. You can decide to be in my club where you like to rub it out and get to the whites that way, or you can say, wow, that's way too much work. I am just gonna paint that with gesso. And that is absolutely fine if you want to do that. I like to rub out, and I use circles when I do this. If you go too much straight up and down, it doesn't work, but if you go in circles, it takes the color off. And again, remember you have to have the right kind of uh, rubbing alcohol. It has to be the 91%. But as you're doing this in circles, you will start seeing that it is taking this color up and, um, and it just eventually becomes just white. I've always thought that this is the time when I would love to have, like, you know how a dental, dental assistant has the technician there, uh, a dentist has a dental assistant, and it's a really kind of neat where right now when you're rubbing this a little bit and you're, it's like a really dirty floor and you're rubbing this stuff and it's kind of, and you're just pretty soon, you're, you're just rubbing dirt onto itself. So if you take your cotton ball, and this is where the assistant would come in, and, and then rub it with water, it picks up that part that you have rubbed off. So I, someday I'm gonna be rich and famous and I'm gonna have an assistant. That'd be fun. So you just keep rubbing this and when you get to the really tiny parts, like, like this line right across here, if I wanted that to be white, then use Q-tips. So I can, I can take the Q-tip and I will rub it like this. And you will be able to take the other side of the Q-tip, pick up what you've already done, and you will have a light uh, streak going through the painting. And like I said, if you ever, if, 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 if it really doesn't work, you can always use um, white gesso to be able to have that back. Um, I am going to paint uh, around, here's my value study to go by. So I am gonna paint around the, uh, I'm gonna take all of this out with my rubbing alcohol. 
So um, let's keep, I'll keep working on this and I'll be back when it's all done. Okay, we have um, successfully scrubbed out the background uh, behind our figures. One thing that I did forget to tell you is when you are scrubbing next to the heads with, with the cotton ball, make sure that you put your finger where, you know, to protect the heads. You can also do it by putting tape on there if you want to, but I usually just put my finger and I like that it has a fuzzy edge there anyway because there will be lots of layers on these to define those, those heads a little bit better. So um, just put your finger wherever you want to come up next to when you're scrubbing out with the rubbing alcohol. So now we've got our, our lights. I can see my figures better. It feels good. So um, I'm going to what I call finding the bottom part of my figures. And so I, I'm going to mix up a, a medium color. I know I'm going to get to a dark. I'm going to get to a rust color. So I want to pick any other color that will show through um, when I go to the rust color and that will make more sense in the next step. So I just want to contrast. So I want to start with a light color. So I'm going to have my, my raw sienna and I want you to notice those of you who are new to acrylic, um, when I did, when I first started acrylic I did this too, but I put my whole brush in here and the paint would be clear up to here. What you do is you just gradually grab the paint out from, from the glob there and it, you're mixing just in the bottom part of your brush. And so I want to get a light color here. So by mixing my white into it and I want a pretty generous amount. So again, just keep bringing the paint into that by, instead of putting your whole brush in there, it'll work out better. And I think I um, have just a, I want to warm it up a little bit more. I'll add just a touch of um, the Hansa yellow medium. Get a little bit more glow into that. So now I'm going to start with um, right up next to her and I'm going to negative paint which means you paint the background around the person and um, to really make her show later it'll be a rust color but right now I'm, I'm having a light tan color. And then this, I'll just have a teeny bit of that circle showing through just for me to not have to redraw it. And what's really fun about acrylic is that there's many different textures that you can add um, as you go. So um, when we started this painting, we blessed it to be able to create the white dots. Remember that? So now we are, are blessing this part so that I will be able to have some of these greens and things come through. You can also have fun with just scratching out and that's a fun, I like to do that right where it's over into the white. So we'll do the other side here too. And I like to, um, what I call, I'm hugging my stars. So I'm going to get a dark right up next to them. But right now, it's a light. And now I'm going to save about a quarter of an inch of that really pretty underpainting. Sometimes my students have a hard time with this. They're like, oh, it's so pretty. How can I, I don't want to cover it up. But you really, um, you notice, you notice this is starting to look even prettier by having the plane next to it. So that's um, why you can't have too much of a good thing is the whole thing. Right here where I lost a little bit of that, you can also lift out. It, when, it's, when you just put it on, 
you can use a thirsty brush, which means that it's squeezed out. Your, wet, your brush is wet and you just take it on a paper towel or something and just wipe it out and you can get back to that underpainting color. Now I'm blessing it again so I have little, I'll have little spots showing. Let's see, I don't think I did this, so let's get that before it dries and some scratch. So forget the, the manicures. <laughs> you, can wear, uh, you can wear gloves when you do this too, but I, I, you know, I'm an artist first, so I like to really get my fingernails down in there and have some fun. We'll go all the way down to this land mass that they are standing on. When I do these clothespin people, um, a story usually develops. And I love that. It's, it's funny because whatever my family, um, whatever we're going through, it seems to show up in my paintings, which is, um, I think, it makes your paintings better when you have a story that goes with them. And you can't help it, they ju it just happens every time I do one. And I've done just umpteen of these, especially the value studies when I'm on a, on a plane or anything, I will, I'll always have my pencil and my permanent marker and I can do any of these type of, of paintings while, I'm, while we're flying and it's not any time wasted. So, let's see, I think we want to go clear down over the top of that, too. Do you remember when we, um, when we used the shaper in the first step? This is what the shaper does. So, if you can get a, a close-up on that, this is, this, is, this is where the paper is injured and it just comes with a circle thing. And so you'll see that that actually led to more ideas on my finished painting um, so that I am able to have like some orbits coming behind, behind the figures. Now we wait, um, I don't know, two or three minutes before we want to take, to take the dots off. So while we're waiting for that, We'll do the top part. I don't want this to be as important as this. So I'm going to um, put a glaze over this. I still want to see the colors. Um, I don't, a glaze means you can see through it. But so I will use mainly transparent colors. But I also, um, I don't want it to be as important and bright as this. So I'm going to kick back. All the whites are going to become this, this cobalt color. So again, I'm just going to barely add a little bit of that teal into it. And I want this to be a glaze. So it's like a watercolor. You should be able to see through it. And if you miss, so I'm kicking back all those whites. Sometimes I, if I miss like the orangey color, the rust color that I had there, all I do is I take this small half inch brush and wherever that was, I lift out those little spots. But I'm still having this be less important than this. So I kicked it back, but now I'm just lifting off that blue off of those other, the, the, um, the oranges, because I, like I like to have those show a little bit more. So this is a good trick. So that's the top, and then I also want to have the bottom a little bit more subdued. So here we go. The whites are going bye-bye. I started with acrylic about, oh, I don't even know, probably 15 years ago, and I just, I'm hooked. 
I love how bright it is. I love um, how instant you get colors instead of having to glaze and glaze and glaze and glaze. <laughs> Not that I don't do watercolor. I still do a lot of watercolor, but I, I'm in my happy place when I'm doing acrylics. So see how much brighter those get when I just lift off that blue glaze off of the rust color. And now the, this is more important than these. So now we will take a Kleenex and um, I have to make sure that this part is dry. So I just lightly touch the part that doesn't have any water that was sprinkled on it. By the way, that blessing thing is my friend Carlin Holman, who is a really, really great artist too. Um, you might want to check out her work. Um, she has really been done a lot to help me with my journey. And you see what happens is I have got that, um, I've got the, the, the dots are, are uh, diluting the color and then that color from underneath is coming through. So, um, make sure this one's dry enough. And so it adds texture, it adds interest. Um, I love it. And when we put the rust color on, this color will pop through. So if you want, just like we did with our initial coat, if you think that they aren't quite bright enough, if you give a spray, see because that background part is already dry, if you give a spray, those spots that you have that are the underneath part will be brighter. And maybe you like them dull, so you get to decide. So that is the next step. Okay.
Well, that is Karen Knutson, and her video is called Fun with Acrylics. And you can learn more about it at lilyartvideo.com. Thanks for watching today. I'm Eric Rhodes. The acrylics uh, that I uh, teach in this video are fantastic for painting like Gustav Klimt because they uh, produce little tiny shapes. As far as other subjects that I have used for this, I have done animals in this technique. I've done landscapes that are bright and not usual colors for landscapes. And I really, really love, um, I just love the colors that you get and it gives you ideas for exploration of turning them a little bit abstract. I've also done abstracts with this technique. The thing I love most about acrylic is are the bright colors, of course, but also that you can layer and be a bit of an archeologist maybe, and um, just to, uh, to be able to layer, layer, layer all of uh, uh, different colors and get some really neat um, antique look. So um, I guess that's what drew me to acrylic in the first place. The thing that this video offers that is unique is how to paint figurative style without being intimidated. You really don't need to know how to draw people per se. We can tell that these are people just by the simple little tips that I give you. So the main five, five things that I think a student will take away from this um, video is how to uh, make little, little tiny shapes in an easy fashion. One thing that I am known for lately is my wire drawing. In this video, it shows the first couple of steps on how to do wire drawing, how to recover from making mistakes by adding another layer, um, how to draw figurative work, um, I invented a couple of things in this, this that have never been shown. I do like to explain things in a very easy way, so I think you'll understand exactly how to do this painting.